Hey guys, thanks for watching the Chen Dynasty. It's Mike Chen. I just got back uh, from a trip to Japan. If you want to see what I did there, check out my vlog channel. Link is in the description box. I was lucky because I ran into a lot of people who could speak a bit of English. Also, I could read a lot of the writing. That's how I was able to get around. And that's good because the only Japanese I know I learned from watching anime. So I didn't want to accidentally profess my love to somebody or challenge someone to a sword fight. I also went to Korea last year. And although I ran into people who spoke a bit of English, I had no such luck with the Writing. But did you know there is a connection between the Chinese, Japanese, and Korean writing system? So in this video, let's talk about that, as well as how they changed throughout the ages. Let's start off with the Chinese. Chinese is said to be the oldest written language that is still in use today. Chinese language started evolving with pictograms in the third millennium BCE. These pictograms were not even close to the modern Chinese characters, but we can at least say that these were the precursors to classic Chinese writing. The Chinese pictograms of the late Neolithic period were first incised on pottery and jays. The symbols were thought to be family emblems that identified ownership over the pottery or jays. The earliest actual Chinese writing made its appearance during the Shang Dynasty and exhibited a very complex system. These writings were found on oracle bones and were used from 1500 to 1000 BCE. There is a legend that someone created these characters for the purpose of a classical Chinese script. This person was called Tang Xie, who is thought to be the official historian of the legendary Yellow Emperor in 2650 BC. Legend has it that Hang Jie had four eyes and eight pupils, and that when he invented the characters, deities and ghosts cried in the sky-ringed millets. There are two legends as to how Hang Jie came up with the characters. The first legend said that the Yellow Emperor gave Hang Jie the task to create characters. Hang Jie then went to a riverbank and told himself that it was his life task to create the characters. But after much time, and effort, he wasn't able to come up with a single one and became discouraged. But just one day later, as he was sitting by the riverbank, he saw a phoenix fly in the sky and drop what seemed to be a hoof print. Cang Jie asked a nearby hunter which creature the print belonged to, to which the hunter said it belonged to a Pi Xiao because he can identify their hoof print, which is different from all other creatures. This inspired Cang Jie to create individual characters that captured the unique characteristics of everything on Earth. From that moment on, Cang Jie paid attention to everything from the sun, moon, clouds, even the birds. After years of hard work, Cang Jie presented his complete set of characters to the Yellow Emperor and he was deeply pleased. As an act of appreciation and thanks, Cang Jie had many monuments built after him to show his contribution to Chinese history and the development of Chinese writing. Another legend was that Cang Jie created the characters by observing a turtle's network of veins. Yep, he, he just saw that and proceeded to come up with the entire set of Chinese characters. By the time of the Zhou Dynasty, the Chinese writing system had developed greatly with more than 5,000 characters. And if you didn't know already, Chinese writing actually has no alphabet. In order to become fluent in it, you just have to memorize each character with its meaning and sound. And that is really difficult because a modern Chinese dictionary can contain more than 40,000 characters. And to read a newspaper, you have to know at least around two to 3,000 characters. In addition to how these characters were developed, there were various versions of script writing that were used depending on the circumstances in Chinese writing as well. One version, the seal scripts, were a form of Chinese writing that were and are still used to write names on personal name stamps. These stamps are often used for labeling on artworks and personal letters. Strat scripts are used in Chinese calligraphy and are written so quickly that sometimes parts of a character are omitted and stroke styles are merged or changed. The standard script can now be separated into traditional and simplified characters. Personally, although Though I can only write the simplified script, I do not prefer it because it was only adopted by the Chinese Communist Party in 1949 in an effort to eradicate illiteracy. But it took out a portion of the meaning from the traditional Chinese characters while doing so. An example is that in the Chinese word for love or I, the traditional character includes the word heart or xin, but for the simplified Chinese, the word for heart is omitted. And so that character kind of lost its original meaning because how do you love with, without your heart? Although traditional characters are still used today, but mainly in places like Taiwan and Hong Kong. Another 
characteristic of ancient Chinese writing was that it was often written up and down, right to left. But after the Cultural Revolution, the Chinese language has become more modernized with characters written like most other languages from left to right and horizontally. The Chinese writing system is actually really complex and very hard to explain. But if you are just trying to identify Chinese characters among other languages, they are usually square and non-curvy, which is basically what standard script is. Now let's take a look at the Japanese writing system. Before the 4th century AD, Japan had no writing system of its own. But by the 5th century, it began to adopt a Chinese script that was probably transferred via the Korean Peninsula. Japan gradually began to adopt these Chinese characters and merged them into their own Japanese-Chinese hybrid style writings. They first began using these characters purely for their phonetic values. This writing system was called Kanban, but it was thought to be very awkward as the grammatical syntax of the Japanese language was said to be different from those of Chinese. Since Chinese is basically a monosymbolic language with no inflected words, while Japanese is polysymbolic that has various stems attached to grammatical meanings. As a result, Japan kept the Chinese characters but used Japanese grammar. These were the circumstances that led Japan to use Chinese characters for their inner meanings and to write words of Chinese origin. Later on, it became a little more complicated when Japan decided to create two kana systems which were similar to what you may call an alphabet. They created the hiragana system to write native Japanese words and the katakana system as a pronunciation aid for Chinese Buddhist scriptures. So you could kind of say that the Japanese writing systems has three different alphabets, the kanji, hiragana, and katagana. In comparison, there are a few thousand kanji characters and only 46 for hiragana and katagana. Also, the Japanese word kanji means the Chinese words hanzi, which means Chinese characters. And to distinguish the Japanese writing systems from the Chinese and Koreans, you can look for an alphabet with a combination of Chinese characters and other characters that look rounder and curved. Finally, let's take a look at the Korean writing system. Since Korea is so close to China, it is no surprise that writing in the Korean peninsula began with the adaptation adaptation of classical Chinese writing. In the earliest times when Korea adapted Chinese characters, they used a system called Idu. Idu was a different system than what was used in China. Korea adapted some characters for their sound values and others for their meanings. Other characters were used for both their sounds and meanings, so this system was pretty ambiguous. But by the 13th century, the ambiguity lessened with simplifications of some characters to distinguish them from their phonetic values. In the 15th century, Korea created their own language called Hangul, which was promulgated by King Se John the Great, the fourth king of the Joseon dynasty. Hangul was created in an effort to promote literacy among the common people, but the system wasn't very widely used and people still used classical Chinese at the end of the day. This didn't completely change until 1945 when Hangul became popular in Korea. Unlike many languages around the world, Hangul was a language where characters were created before sounds rather than the other way around. The Korean language is made up of 19 consonants and 21 vowels with each character compounded with different vowels and consonants. And because the Korean alphabet is fairly easy to remember and there are no tones involved, many say that Korean is one of the easiest languages to learn. Until you get to the grammar part. In Korean, grammar is used depending on who you are speaking with. You would use a different grammar structure for an older person than you would a younger person, as well as many other types of grammar structures that just seems way too complicated for me to comprehend. So if you're just trying to identify Korean characters, the most distinguishing characteristic is that it has a lot of circles and L's inside the characters. So there you go guys, hope this video has been pretty helpful. I know there are a lot of different Asian languages out there, but in this video, we really only have time to compare these three. So if you guys like this, we can do more videos on this series. A lot of people do say that Korean is the easiest to learn, but I find it the hardest. I just cannot get the pronunciation correct for the life of me. I did take a year of Japanese in college and I really enjoyed it because a lot of the characters, a lot of the kanji, um, I already knew. Also, I love the fact that a lot of words in Japanese are just like the, the, the sounds of the English words, like cheesecake is like cheesecake A computer is like computer. So after those words start coming up, I was thinking, yo, you know, I, I can speak Japanese. If I need to go to the bathroom, I can just be like, toilet. Okay, I'm just kidding around. It's not really like that. Don't really go to Japan and do what I just did. All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. See you later.